In this video, we will turn from nutritional requirements to the mechanisms by which animals process food, and we will consider the four stages of food processing – ingestion, digestion, absorption, and elimination. Food processing begins with ingestion, which is eating or feeding. In animals, food consumption happens in one of four different mechanisms. The first is filter feeding. Here, animals make use of specialized hair-like structures to separate small organisms and food particles from large volumes of water. This type of feeding is common in aquatic organisms such as crustaceans, but larger animals like whales also present this type of feeding. Next, we have substrate feeding, which is present in animals that live on their food source, such as a caterpillar eating a leaf. Fluid feeding corresponds to the ability of sucking nutrient-rich fluids from a living host. Animals that have this type of feeding present specialized mouth parts resembling straws so that they can penetrate and obtain a liquid meal. Examples include mosquitoes, bees, and hummingbirds. Finally, bulk feeding is what most large animals have, including humans. Digestion is the second stage of food processing and this is where food is broken down into molecules that are small enough for absorption. Mechanical processes like chewing and grinding as well as chemical processes are employed during digestion. Animals cannot directly use macromolecules in food, hence the need to break food particles down. Smaller particles that pass through plasma membranes are then brought together to satisfy the nutritional needs of an organism. Digestion works by a process called enzymatic hydrolysis, where water molecules are used to break down covalent bonds. To some extent, these processes are reversible, when small building blocks are linked together to make large macromolecules. In the example shown, a polysaccharide, sucrose, is being split into simple sugars, glucose and fructose, which can then be used in cellular processes to produce energy. Absorption is simply the take-up of small molecules, such as amino acids and sugars. Absorption is usually coupled with distribution as well, where nutrients are taken up inside cells but also move throughout the body. Finally, elimination is the excretion of undigested material or waste that passes out of the digestive system. We know that food processing involves specific processes with the goal of breaking down food into small, usable molecules. But where do these processes take place? And knowing that enzyme hydrolysis breaks down molecules that are already in the body, how do animals prevent digesting their own cells and tissues? This is where we need to look into digestive compartments for both intracellular and extracellular digestion. Let's start with intracellular digestion. The main process by which intracellular digestion is carried out is by using food vacuoles, the simplest intracellular digestive compartments, and by phagocytosis and pinocytosis. Phagocytosis uses vacuoles to engulf food, surrounding it with a capsule of phospholipids resembling the plasma membrane. Similarly, Pinocytosis happens for liquid foods, mainly by engulfing solutes that are then transported into vesicles. Food vacuoles then fuse with lysosomes, which are organelles containing hydrolytic enzymes. This fusion brings food in contact with these enzymes, allowing digestion to occur inside cells. In terms of extracellular digestion, animals have compartments that are continuous with the outside of the body. Some animals, like the carnivorous hydra, possess a gastrovascular cavity, used for digestion and distribution of nutrients. The gastrovascular cavity is lined with specialized cells forming a gastrodermis, which releases digestive enzymes. These enzymes break down food into small particles, and food vacuoles then engulf digestive particles back into the cells. The other highly specialized digestive compartment is the alimentary canal. Most animals, including humans, have this type of compartment. Alimentary canals are variable, as you can see in the three examples shown here. However, all of them keep the continuous nature of extracellular digestion, being the mouth, the entrance opening, and the anus, the exiting opening. Organs like the esophagus, stomach, and intestines are also present though they present differences in each species, making them specialize for the nutritional needs for that specific animal. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in this video will be true no matter what biology class you are taking. 
However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. Images and diagrams are from Campbell's Biology 11 edition unless otherwise stated. Remember, if you are a currently enrolled Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services in our tutoring center, which is located on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building. You will find all of the details you need to know about these services in our website, which is www.baylor.edu forward slash tutoring. You can schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online or just drop in during any of our business hours. For many information about our current services, please visit our website. Thank you.